Hey guys, my name is That Quite Kid, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to exploit unconstrained delegation. But before understanding unconstrained delegation, we need to understand what is delegation and why do we need it. If you look at this image, I have a client tier, I have an application tier, and a data tier. And in Active Directory, we use Kerberos authentication. And there is an issue with Kerberos authentication that it does not work over multiple hops. So client basically cannot, basically the Kerberos authentication of clients cannot hop from application and then to data. To solve this problem, we have delegation. Through delegation, the application tier can basically use the credentials of the client tier and authenticate on behalf of client tier to the data tier. Basically, uh, the TGT, ticket granting ticket of this client, you can give it to this application tier. It will save it and using your ticket, it can authenticate to the data tier and retrieve the data you were asking for. So that's what unconstrained delegation is. That is outward delegation. You give your TGT to another application and that application or that system basically authenticates to the backend server on your behalf. So the scenario for unconstrained delegation in attacks usually is you have local admin access on the system as well on which uh, on system that has this unconstrained delegation enabled. So if a system has unconstrained delegation enabled, you have local admin access. So what you can do is you can listen for ticket granting tickets, TGTs using Rubius. So you run Rubius and whenever a high privileged user basically authenticates to the system with unconstrained delegation, you can capture his TGT and pass that TGT to gain access to the resources using the credentials of uh, that user. Let's say you have in my system, in my lab, I have this Windows 10 system, which has unconstrained delegation enabled. And on my DC2, I have a scheduled task, which will basically authenticate to the system with unconstrained delegation using the credentials of a domain admin. So we can get the ticket granting ticket of the domain admin user and basically authenticate to domain controllers using that TGT. So I have my bloodhound here. You can see that there are five domain admins and Denji is also a domain admin. If you go to analysis and you can see there is delegation attacks, unconstrained delegation system. So you can see that this Windows 10 dot berserk dot local system has unconstrained delegation enabled. Okay, so start this machine. So that quite kid is a domain user which has local admin access on this Windows 10 system as well. Open up PowerShell. Open a ad, uh, run as administrator because you are a local admin on the system. Go to drive users that quite kid dot preserve downloads. So if you try to access the C drive of the domain controller, you will see access denied. Access is denied. So now after like this attack is done, you will see that we can access the C drive of the domain controller. So first we need to see, I mean, first we need to run Rubius to listen for incoming connections. We need to start this DC2, which has a scheduled task running as soon as the system starts up, it will authenticate to the system. And that way we will catch its TGT monitor slash interval. Another way you can do this is if you have print nightmare, a system 
which is vulnerable to print nightmare. So we are listening for TGTs. Right now we have a TGT of Windows 10 like the system account system account and that quite kid user the user we are logged in so in a few seconds as soon as the system boots up you will see a ticket granting ticket received for the user denji as you can see we have obtained the ticket granting ticket of user denji so stop this uh, rubius monitor copy this base64 encoded ticket Open Notepad Plus, paste it here, go to search, let's replace all the spaces and then we need this ticket in one line, for that we use slash h star slash capital R and replace so that you have this output in one line. Copy this ticket. Now. Now we need to cache this ticket. If you do K list, you might see we have that quite kid, that quite kid. We have that quite uh, cache tickets of that quite kid user that we are logged in. But as you can see that we through Rubius we have obtained the TGT of the domain admin user Dengel. So now we need to cache this ticket. We can do this using Rubius pass the ticket slash ticket paste it press enter now do klist we have cache ticket of the user denji so in the beginning if you remember when you try to view the c drive of the domain controller dc1 we got access denied now if you try to do it again you can see we we can now access the c drive of the domain controller login enter ps session dash computer name uh, dc1 who am i as you can see we are running in the context of denji user that is a domain and admin user and now we can basically log into the domain controller run commands as that denji user so this is one of the scenarios of unconstrained delegation in which uh, through phishing or some way you basically get a domain admin to authenticate to a system and that system has unconstrained delegation if that system has unconstrained delegation only then you can capture the ticket granting tickets of anyone who authenticates so if you have a system with unconstrained delegation and this is important and you have local admin access on that system if you have local admin access on a system only then you can run rubius uh, because uh, the monitor command, I mean monitor option in Rubius requires elevated privileges. So you require a administrative like local admin access on the system with unconstrained delegation to listen for incoming TGTs. So attack scenario again, we will go through it. You have a system with local admin access. You have a user that has local admin access on a system. And that system also has unconstrained delegation. Because it has unconstrained delegation, anyone who authenticates to the system we can basically capture the tgt of that user so i have a scheduled task running which will authenticate to the system as you as you saw we captured the tgt of denji user using rubius pass the ticket we basically cache this ticket and after that we access the c drive of the domain controller as that user and we have also like session on this dc1 now so that's it for this video and thank you for watching.